Welcome, Charles Lamana, Corporate Vice President of Microsoft. Thank you for having me. Super excited for the conversation today. Charles, you're, you're a key player in Microsoft's agentic strategy and the, the company's vision for AI agents grounded in, in Copilot. Uh, this is a pretty ambitious an announcement you're, you're making. Just curious, conceptually, you know, there's a lot of players emerging. There's Crew, there's uh, Swarm from OpenAI, there's Langchain with you know, Langgraph. Um, conceptually, what are you particularly proud of? From, from your agentic framework that you're releasing today? The biggest thing is it's enterprise ready today. And there's a few things that you have to do to make that be true. So first we have this idea of the copilot control system, which makes it easy to secure and manage all these agents that you create. They honor the permissions, the data governance, the information and data labeling that you've already done. So you can really embrace AI without worrying about it changing your overall security landscape. The second piece is every enterprise is extremely heterogeneous in the systems they use. They're not all Microsoft apps, they're not all Microsoft databases, and we have over 1,400 connectors available for our agents today, whether that's SAP, whether that's ServiceNow, whether that's mainframes or SQL databases, we can connect to all of it. So your agent can draw from the knowledge you already have and take actions in a system you already use. And the last bit, is really that, that co-pilot and agent connection. You'll hear us talk about that a lot over the next few months. We think that really unlocks magical elements for agents. Your research team released this Magentic One architecture for multi-agent systems last week. Uh, you know, this seems to, to focus on a generalist agent, right? This, this, this research that you provided, and it, it, it has a checklist for planning and an activity ledger to track what's being done you know, these handoffs to other agents. Is this the philosophy that, that's essentially driving this enterprise offering? Is it the same architecture? One of the things which we've seen emerge, which has been fascinating, is this idea of agents interacting with one another as part of a single system to produce better outcomes. So instead of having, say, a single AI agent to do a task, maybe you have five or six AI agents that collaborate, a planner and then specific tasks, for example, to get the job done. and the, what you can do inside of the platforms that we provide is you can create all of these agents and assemble them in a way where they operate as a single system. We're not talking a company having 100 agents or 200 agents. We're talking companies having hundreds of thousands to millions of agents. For these multi-agent systems, we're going to work with third-party companies who also will register their agents with this broader system. We've announced ServiceNow, Workday, SAP, Adobe, and Cohere, for example, they all have agents that plug into the system. And then our customers are going to create a whole host of agents very specific to their unique processes and unique data. And all of this, it's almost like a mesh or a web of agents. They need to work together. Uh, and that's where we think, you know, trust and security and an open platform is absolutely critical to make it work because this multi-agent system won't even always be built by a single company or a single team or a single person. Uh, you may have agents from Microsoft and agents from other companies and agents our customers build all collaborating and complete a task. I, I want to pause here and, and just ask what you're seeing people using these agents for, right? For, for maybe your early uh, adopter program, early testers. One thing which has blown us away is how quickly people are getting started using the agent building experiences that we have inside of Copod Studio. We cross over 100,000 organizations having already used Copilot Studio to create or edit an agent. That is a lot faster than we thought and it is a lot faster than any other kind of cutting edge technology we've released. And that was like a 2X growth in just a quarter from Microsoft. Uh, and some of the examples that are coming out are really interesting because people are approaching work differently. And I'll, I'll maybe share two broad categories. So the first is around automation. So we're seeing companies automating tasks and workflows that historically you couldn't really automate. And the reason was they required some degree of cognitive reasoning. And we shared this great example from McKinsey where they had a project intake desk where cut their customers make requests for a project team and it would go through scheduling, availability, expert matching, um, and try to have some bias to people who've worked with a customer or client in the past. And that used to take 20 days. It was a desk of, of people doing the matchmaking. They were able to quickly build an AI agent, which 
took that from 20 days down to two days. Second bucket, this is, I'd say, a personal favorite, um, is there's new ways of collaborating and working. So what we're seeing start to emerge is people, instead of, say, sharing documents or presentations or uh, you know, long form content with their team or with partners so people can get context, they'll actually build an agent and then share the agent with that person. And what they can do is they can then interrogate and ask questions to the agent and get information in real time. So for example, when I share out like our planning memos to my team, I don't share a document anymore. I actually share an agent I created on top of the document and other content. So people can ask their own follow-up questions and learn at their own pace. You're creating these these agents directly for individuals and organizations, and then you're you're focusing on providing tools, as you say, for organizations and others to build and customize these agents. Uh, I'm just curious, do you see those growing in tandem over time or in the future? Do you see one winning out over the other? We're going to continue to have an incredibly open, reusable, and extensible platform for every type of developer, the hardcore coder, all the way to the drag and drop and clicks not code, uh, say business user. So we're gonna have full support for there. But we've also learned that you, it's hard to build a platform without also building amazing apps on that platform at the same time. So we're building a multitude of pre-built agents at Microsoft using those same platform components. It makes the platform better, and we don't have every customer having to recreate the same types of agents, you know, things like order taking agent or employee self-service agent. Those are finished agents that we can just give to customers to go use. So a long way of saying from platform to finished solutions on that platform. Companies are building these agents, you know, working them into their own applications. Do you see it staying at that level or do you see these tools and frameworks kind of seeping and down into the operating system? I, I would say I, we, we think it will show up everywhere. Um, and it doesn't mean we're going to replace like the core kernel scheduler with an agent because, you know, a rules based scheduler is probably better and more deterministic. But who knows? Um, but the, the whenever you have a, a technology that makes something possible that was previously impossible, all you kind of are always shocked by how broadly it ends up being used. And the like in this case, like the big breakthrough from the large language model, and now we are so many layers above the model itself, but the big breakthrough the model uh, included was understanding this unstructured content, you know, language or video or audio, um, as well as the ability as a consequence of that to have the beginnings of reasoning um, to make or come to conclusions or make judgments based on that unstructured data. So the browser, uh, word processor, uh, the core operating system experience, the way you do sales processes and customer support processes, they all have to be reevaluated now that this capability exists. And um, you can already see kind of bits and pieces peeling off and changing across all these experiences. Um, and I think there will only be more and more over time. And just like when the internet first showed up, this idea of connectivity, at first it was fairly limited, you know, very browser centric, but now operating systems are connected to the internet, uh, applications are connected to the internet, and the architecture has even changed of client and server because of the internet. So it'll take time for it to fully permeate, um, but I don't think there'll be really any part of the stack in computing that doesn't have some component reimagined as a result of all the agent and AI capabilities. The other announcement that I think is new is you know, you're, you're saying that the makers will soon be able to access models from the Azure AI model catalog, which has something like eight, eight 1800 models mm -hmm. available. Uh, does, are, you, are you opening this up completely to co-pilot in the, in the agentic framework? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, to kind of share and geek out for a second, yeah. is it's not going to be one model per agent. Instead, it's, it's going to be many models working in concert for an agent to accomplish a task. So for example, inside of Copilot Studio, by default, we have different models to do things like generate the embeddings over content you upload versus a model to help us synthesize multiple data sources to a single re response or one model for orchestration and one model for tool selection and parameter feeling and more and more. So there's, it's a kind of a, a basket of models. Some are the big large language models we all know, 
Some are small models we fine tuned or distilled. Some are things that we built custom because we actually had a unique insight at Microsoft. So there's going to be a collection of models to make an agent work. And what customers tell us is for 90% of the case, they don't even want to deal with this complexity. They want a finished platform that can build an agent without having to worry about the underlying models. But there is 10%, you know, a small percentage of solutions where a few more points of accuracy are critical. And for that, our customers are asking, can I open up like the insides of the agent platform and kind of change around the models because maybe they built something themselves in Azure or maybe they know for this specific task, this specific model is better. Fascinating. Uh, Charles, do you, do you anticipate Microsoft developing a proprietary model for this default, right? I mean, presumably this lead orchestration agent, mm -hmm. right? The default you've talked about that 90% of folks are going to want. Yeah, I think we're going to push wherever we need to make the experience great for our customers. And, and right now, what we see overwhelmingly is doing fine tuning and, or in and around GPT-40 produces the best outcome for customers. So over in the fullness of time, I think there's a lot of possibilities and, and even thinking like, what is the core model? There probably will be many core models. Like a single agent may use a different core model depending on the input it gets. Like we could have a model router, for example. So, so I think there's gonna be a lot of evolution uh, in this space. Uh, and I think from here, a lot of fine tuning and a lot of, I'd say deep science work on the Microsoft side to continue to make these agents be the best agents out there. There's been a lot of, uh, speculation uh, around where the value is, but from this conversation, in the value in LLM seems in, in, in agent agents seems to be in the applications, you know, the tools you're providing for your end users. Uh, but you know, as for that primary model that you know pe pe people have been looking at this LLM race, you know, OpenAI's model versus Anthropic. Um, in, in Google, do you, do you see value staying in that uh, that leading? kind of lead orchestration model that uh, you'd be defaulting to? Is there, is, can, you, can you talk a little bit about how much value stays in that lead agentic LLM? Yeah, I mean, the, there's probably like two things which I think are interesting to note. Um, and it's early, to, it's early to make a conclusion either way. For Copot Studio, the way that customers uh, purchase it is it's a, a rate per message, so not per token. And it's largely decoupled from the model cost. And the reason is because the agent's value isn't, you know, raw compute. The agent's value is business outcomes. Uh, and so I think the fact that we already are kind of seeing this decoupling from model prices and token prices and agent pricing, and that's not even just a Microsoft thing. I think that's something that's happening across the industry. To me, that indicates that there's actually going to be a lot of value capture above the model. Second thing is a year ago, when I would talk to customers, the conversation was always about the model, whose model is best, what's unique about your model. That's not what customers talk to me about anymore at all. They ask me, what are your examples of business value and impact and results that people are getting using this technology? And what's the best way for me to do that? And that is not a model conversation. That's a pre-built agent conversation. And that has been a remarkable shift uh, in the market. I would imagine Microsoft want to develop a generalist agent, you know, that that within tools like Copilot and Teams for tasks such as research or creating presentations on PowerPoint or pretty pretty high high level reasoning tasks. Would you not? Yeah, we would definitely, and I think we have already a, like a couple dozen pre built generalist agents that we've uh, either shipped or announced on the Microsoft side. So um, things like let me do financial research. Uh, either us or a partner of Microsoft will build an agent to do that because we don't, you know, you don't want every company rebuilding that. Um, but an agent that's specific to say how this one company does clinical trials for new medicine, that's an agent they're going to have to build because uh, they, they want it to match exactly their process. So you'll see this mix, of course, um, showing up across co-pilots and agents. What have you seen emerging, right, as these companies, customers are using these agentic tools do you, what do you foresee in terms of jobs, changes in, in roles? So I, I would say three things that are happening right now. So number one, 
just like how everybody is kind of expected to be able to use a spreadsheet today, you know, you can, if you work in, in an office, you're supposed to be able to open Excel and put some basic data entry there. Everybody's going to be expected to be able to use like Copilot to be more productive and also be able to create their own lightweight agents. Your job will increasingly be to supervise and route and, and curate these agents, just like you send email or join meetings, kind of every office worker will, will need to be able to use a copilot and build some lightweight agents. Number two, copilot and agents and all this generative AI is only as good as the data and content you provide to it. And we all know data warehouses, data platforms, that will be super important moving forward. But content is going to be extremely important. This is your knowledge base, your wikis, your how to's. And what we're seeing for people that are more like further down the path of adopting this technology, they have this new role of almost content ops, people who review and curate content regularly to make sure the agent and copilot is up to date. And then number three is like the enterprise app developer, the enterprise architect, they're going to be enterprise agent developers, enterprise agent architects. CIOs used to talk about the, you know, the app gap, I have to build a hundred or 500 mobile apps. There's a huge backlog. They're all going to be talking about the agent gap in no time. Uh, and there's going to be a backlog bigger than they can possibly ever address of business units asking for agents. It's intimidating, but at the same time, exciting, right? So, so good luck with everything. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me.